Welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner and another Photoshop Elements video tutorial. Now I was asked by one of our viewers if we can create the Dave Hill effect in Photoshop Elements. And she wanted to know if I could possibly do a tutorial on it. So this is actually uh, a tutorial because a viewer wrote in, a uh, viewer of the shows wrote in and asked me to do so. So if you have any ideas for future shows or topics or something you want to see, by all means, comment on these uh, YouTube videos or drop me an email at jackstechcorner at gmail.com and I'll see what I can come up with. So let's get started. So here's our end result. And as you see, what happens is with the Dave Hill effect, you can use it on portraits and it skins the, the uh, it, it smooths the skin out very, very well. I know you can do this with a lot of other tools such as Portrait Professional or one of those tools uh, that's made to do this. But this is a nice way to do it with Photoshop Elements and the tools that you already have available to you. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get rolling on this um, right now. So here's what we're going to first begin doing. First, I'm going to revert this picture back to the picture that I started with. So I'm just simply going to go to uh, Image, Revert. Now here's the picture that I first started with. And this is obviously a picture of my wife, a picture that we did in a photo shoot for one of the live shows. And today we're just going to do some touch up work. The first thing I'm gonna do is duplicate this image twice. So I'll do Command or Control J two times. Now we're always gonna be working on the uppermost layer. We're not gonna to be touching the lower layers because we don't wanna destroy those. So on the uppermost layer, the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to apply a high pass filter. So go to filter and we're going to go down to other and then high pass. Click on that. Now you'll see here that I have it set to 6%. You can set this to 6 or 4. We're going to try to do it at 4% right about there. And we're going to go ahead and click OK. Now what we're going to do on this layer is change our layer style or our blending mode. We're going to change our blending mode to vivid light. And now you can see that what it does with vivid light is it changes it around a little bit. But what we want to do is lower the opacity down on that vivid light to 70%. Let's lower this down to about 70% there. There we go. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to merge those two layers. And we can do that simply by holding our control or command key down and hitting the letter E. That will merge those two layers down. Once you get them merged together, now we're going to duplicate them again using command or control J. So already you can see we're using a lot of layer work here. We're using filter work. So this is a really great tutorial to start getting the fill and the use of your Photoshop elements. We're going to go now again, we're going to do another high pass filter. So we'll go to filter, other, high pass filter. And this time we're going to take this one up to 6%. Let's just take it. So what we're doing is we're layering the effects on top of each other. And we've done this a lot in the past. So this is how we're doing it to able to enable us to stack these uh, filters on top of each other. So we're going to layer that down there. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to change our blending mode now to color and we're going to lower our opacity down to 40 percent let's lower the opacity down to 40 percent right there and now we have a little bit of a different look here so the next thing we're going to do now is again merge those two layers down using either command or control e and we'll merge those two layers down now we're going to again duplicate the layers so command or control J to duplicate the layers. And now what we want to do is we want to add a Gaussian blur. So let's go to filter, go to blur and Gaussian blur. Now on your blurring effects, be very careful. You don't want to get it too blurred, something like this. You don't want to do that. You want to drop this down and we're just going to give it about four pixel blur. Eh, right about there, four pixels, and click OK. Once you have that done, we want to now add a layer mask. So the layer mask is a little tool 
right above your layers. It's the third button over. It says, it says to add a layer mask. Click on that layer mask and go up under Edit, Fill Layer. I want you to fill that layer with 50% gray. So this may be selected to foreground color. All you got to do is click the pull down menu and go to 50% gray. And you'll just simply click OK. Now what you're going to do is we are going to brush with our black so we can reveal what's under this. And we're going to take out some of that blur out of the eyes. So select the brush and then just start painting right over top the eyes like so. And what you're doing is we're taking the Gaussian blur off of the eyes. That's very important because we don't want the eyes to be blurry. We want the skin to be actually starting to smooth itself over. I also like to do the lips and bring the lips back out so they look full and have a lot of color to them. Uh, and the teeth. And we also, a lot of people forget this, but we also want to do the hair. So I'm going to make a bigger brush size using my right bracket key. I'm just going to go over the hair and bring that back out just to make sure it shines and we're not having the hair all blurred out because we're only really working with skin tone. Go over this hair up here. Again, you're just working with the skin tone, so everything else we can pull out. Now, if this person would have anything on like a necklace or a ring or something, if you can see that if you're doing wedding photos, you're going to want to make sure you bring those out also. And there you go. So we're just actually just kind of painting over this just like so. The next thing we're going to do at this point is do a control E once again. We're going to pull those layers back together now. And then we're going to go to the enhance drop down menu. Enhance. Unsharp mask. Use our unsharp mask. And we're going to set this to about 120 just to pull out some of the un the sharpness out of the picture and just to tone it down a little bit again. Just click OK. Once you do that, we're going to now go with the unsharp mask and we're going to blend it. We're going to use our blending modes again and go to luminosity. Once we added that luminosity in, we're going to duplicate that image once again using Control or Command J. We duplicated the image once again. Now we're going to go to Filter, go to Noise, and we're going to reduce some of that noise that we added into this picture. So let's go to Reduce Noise. Now it gives you a really tight shot here to see what noise you have coming up in here, but I like to run a strength of um, usually about 10, so anywhere from anywhere from really 7 to 10 and we're just going to use 10 on this click OK that's your strength click OK and now what you want to do is we're going to go to filter blur and we're going to add a surface blur to this picture on your surface blur you want to go 7 to 10 again don't go too crazy with it if you see this you're going to go too crazy with it so let's go down to 7 And click OK. And you'll see now this is really smoothing the skin over really, really well. Again, we're going to do a Control E to duplicate or to merge those two layers down. As you can see, they merge down into layer one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a create a fill and adjustment layer, and we're going to go to brightness and contrast. Now, brightness and contrast, you can work with the brightness and contrast of this overall picture. So if we bring the contrast up, you'll see it will get very contrasty in the background there. So let's bring that down. I like to add just a little bit of contrast to it, just the overall picture itself, so maybe eight. You can also play with the brightness. You can bring your brightness up or down. Overall brightness we might bring up a little bit, right about there. That's about a nine and click the X once again. Now, once we do that, I want to do one more thing here is to click on the layer mask, the brightness layer mask. We don't have to add one. Once again, we're painting with black. We're going to go to Edit, Fill Layer. Again, fill it with 50% gray. And then again, 
just because we added that surface blur, I want to just go over the eyes once again just to make sure I get the eyes to pop out. Just like so. And again, we're going to do the mouth again just to make sure we get it. Make sure it's popping there so it's not blurry at all. So we'll bring that out just like so. And then what we're going to do is we're going to raise our brush size using the right bracket key and go over the hair once again. Just to make sure there's nothing in the hair that's actually blurred. We want the hair to be nice and sharp and, and in focus, right? So we don't want any of that blurring effect to take over. And there we go. Just pull that up and we'll go over the bottom of the hair just to pull that up. Now, once you get that part done, all you have to do now, the last thing to do is control E. That will merge those layers down. And now to see this effect, let's just simply turn off the visibility icon, the little eyeball in front of the layer. And you'll see the original picture we had and the picture we have now. The original picture and the original picture. You can see where it smooths out all the pores in the face and it makes the face very natural. But the skin tone and everything is very, very um, smoothed over and it looks really, really good. Well, folks, I hope you've enjoyed this edition of Jack's Tech Corner and Photoshop Elements, the Dave Hill effect. And yes, you can do the Dave Hill effect with Photoshop Elements. You know, so many people over the years have said, Jack, you've saved us so much money by allowing us just to buy Photoshop Elements and not the full Photoshop CS. We know that we can do so much more with it than just the, uh, the quick and the guided edits. If you want to learn more about how to use Photoshop Elements, please sign up for one of my classes at jtclearning.com. That's jtclearning.com. There's Photoshop Elements 12 and Photoshop Elements 13 ready for you to take and start enjoying your Photoshop Elements even more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next time for another Photoshop Elements video tutorial. Bye for now.